Hi, everybody. Oh, that was a little bit louder than I expected there. <laughs> Hello. Um, so I'm Rick Harvey. Um, I'm going to be the, uh, the moderator for this session, but this session's really about our user group leaders over here. I'm going to introduce you to them later. Um, but we're here to talk about how you build skills through your community groups. And our community groups are, are quite special. We've got, we've got a lot of user groups worldwide now. There's a, there's a few, few hundred user groups that are all over the world. You might even spot your pin on this map here for uh, user groups. So I look after the UK and Ireland region, and we have 22 user groups at the moment. Um, our user groups are, are special. We take an active step to stand back, and we don't enforce any rules on our user groups. Um, but we provide speakers. We want our user groups to be independent, and we're going to have a chat about this later. Um, independence in a user group is great, because you get this option to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly of AWS, and that's great feedback for us, but it's also a great learning experience for you. You learn how not to do things as well as how to do that. So we're going to talk about how this affects learning in your group and why it's a good thing. I've got a couple more slides to do in a minute um, and talk about our online communities. But first of all, I, I want to get a bit of an idea in this room. Um, how many of you here are user group leaders? We've got a few leaders here. Well, you four should all have your hands up here. <laughs> how many of you are in a user group? OK, so we've got a lot of people who are thinking about joining a user group. That's good. That's good. Hopefully, you'll be learning something today. Now, we're also going to put questions uh, to the panel from all of you. And to do that, um, if you go on your phones and download an app called Slido, S-L-I-D-O, you'll be able to uh, put questions to me, and I'll be able to put them to the panel. So if you download that app, I'll give you a code in a little bit, and you'll be able to send questions up to the stage. But just have that app ready. And um, you can also vote up questions that you want to be answered. So we'll, we'll go through that. Now, we've also got an online community. Um, we have a Slack channel now, and we're building up a community channel in there. Um, there's just shy of 700 users in that channel at the moment. And yet again, it's a, uh, a chance to mix with other users of AWS and share your knowledge, um, ask questions, share your experiences. And at the moment, there's only one way to get an invite to this. Um, and I am that single point of failure. If you uh, DM me on Twitter, my DMs are open to anyone, send me your email address, and I will add you. Now, this is because it's in preview, but you're lucky, you're talking to me, um, and I can open this preview up to all of you. So drop me a, a message on Twitter, and I will get you added to this group. And we've got people from all around the world on this group, so there's normally somebody active on this Slack channel to have a chat with. But do participate, do talk about it. Community is one of these things where you get more out the more you put in. So highly encourage you to do this. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna get our panel to introduce themselves today, but I'm gonna put their, their wonderful bio pictures up there, but you can see I've sat them in the right order. Um, so uh, you can work out who's who here. But um, I'm going to start off with Craig, and I'm going to ask you to all introduce yourself. So I'm just going to power this mic up for you. And we have to wait a second, apparently. Yeah. There we go. It's all loud now. Hello? Ooh. That was really loud. Really don't use microphones that often, Rick. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everybody. My name's Craig Muir. Um, I'm from Glasgow in Scotland. Yeah, United Kingdom. Um, yeah, Michael knows me. Um, so my user group's about two years old. Um, we have about 650 people. We meet fairly regularly, every sort of six weeks. Um, we, we have quite a good turnout. We, we, we kind of average around about 50, 60 people. So, and I'm sure the guys will say this, one of the things we, we have is um, we have a lot of people reserved and then we have quite a few drop-offs. That's just a pattern. Um, we have a wide range of experience, and as Rick says, we tend to get someone along from AWS every second user group. But really, the focus of the user group is it's an open environment. We want anybody to come along of any level, any experience, uh, and really just chat. And, and, and it is an open environment. We've got no rules. Anything's up for discussion, etc. It doesn't necessarily have to be AWS. It can be everything else as well, but we tend to focus on AWS. So. 
Hello, I'm, I'm Rafael, or Rafi for short. So I come from the Philippines. And in my user group, we've been running it. I've been running it for around six years. And we have around 4,000 4, participants. And we do a monthly meetup. So every month we do it. So in the beginning, it didn't start off monthly, but now uh, it is monthly. And we average around 50 people also. And I think uh, the reason that we started, or at least I joined the user group in the beginning was that uh, when I was training for myself, there was no venue for me to really learn, uh, and there was no AWS staff in my country. So what in the beginning, what I would do is I would blast email my questions to all AWS employees that <laughs> I knew. Right? And so from there, I said, I think there's a better way to do this, and that's where the user group, I participated in the user group, and then eventually led the user group. Hi there, I'm Margaret Valtiera. I run the Chicago user group. We're at about 4,000 people, and we have meetups monthly. Um, at each actual event, we probably get about 100 people. Um, so we have the good problem now of trying to find venues that can fit 100 people. Uh, we like to rotate between different sponsor venues. So it's once we started getting monthly, it helped uh, people come towards us and say, hey, we want to host, hey, we want to pay for pizza and just doing it monthly has really helped. Pretty good. <laughs> Hi, I'm Fernando Honig. I actually don't have any user group, um, <laughs> but I'm still here. Um, what I do actually is I help other user groups to build their own uh, spaces and, and I'm focused on the uh, Spanish or Hispanic community. In the last, I'll say, 24 months, we, I help create about 12 user groups in Latin America and, and Spain. And, and we have a very large online community of about 2,000 members. We have our own Slack as well, and, and we have our um, LinkedIn group and, and, and our YouTube channel where we do like monthly webinars and we invite people to, to come and talk. Excellent, thank you very much. Yeah, so joining user groups, it's a really, really good thing to do. And I'm going to talk to our panel a little bit about how it enables you to skill up and learn more about AWS and dive deep on certain subjects. One thing to say, though, if you don't have a user group in your area and you're interested in starting one, reach out to us, and we'll help you bootstrap that, that user group. So we want to see more communities come together. We want to grow this. It's really useful to you. It's really useful to us. So let's help each other do this. Right. I just want to kick off with getting to know a little bit more about your groups, actually. Um, every group's very, very different in how they operate. Um, I know Craig's group personally. I presented there. They're one of our most technical uh, user groups. And basically, I want to, what's, what's the thing you're most proud of in your user group? Um, there's quite a few things, actually. But uh, <laughs> we're very open. Um, and we're very happy to discuss anything. So if you come along and you are an associate or, or you're an advocate or you're fully trained, you're more than welcome. And, and if you don't know your S3s, th then we, you're equally treated as welcome. So I think we're very open, we're very chatty, but we, we don't judge. I know that sounds a little um, bit... And that openness, you find that's good for the conversation, basically, so totally. people can learn through that. Yeah. But, you know, myself, I started the user group two years ago. I didn't know what an S3 bucket was. And now I'm I, a solution architect in this area. So we are. We're very open. We're very friendly. And um, if you come along, we, we, we're welcome, basically. You, you know, that sounds a bit... Awesome. Yeah. What about you, Rafi? For me... I think uh, what I'm most proud of is that our community in the Philippines anyway has been one of the most consistent groups and you know, given our years of uh, operation, we've seen a lot of other communities that go uh, just, just fade away. But for us, I think the reason that we've managed to actively create an uh, open active community is because of our co-leaders. You know, so we get the... Uh, the, the inspiration and also the dedication of our co-leaders to run it every month and month. Yeah, That's right. I'd, I'd always say to anyone considering a user group, have a 
co-organizer. It's a lot of work. It's very rewarding, but <laughs> you've hit the, the nail on the head Correct. there. And yourself, Margaret. I'm really proud of our accessibility for the group. Um, like these other gentlemen have mentioned, just having newcomers welcome at all, all skill levels. Um, something I did about a year ago, I created a Slack channel for the Chicago group because I, I had a fair amount of people come to me to ask, hey, I'm looking for a job, like what should I do? Or you know, if somebody had a question about how they should architect something, they would ask me, mm -hmm. which is flattering, but we should talk to each other and keep it going outside of just networking at an event. So there's a Slack channel with job postings. Um, there's a, a channel called Ask Experts, yeah. which I guess is a little intimidating now that I think about it, but <laughs> people are in there pretty actively asking what's going on. We have a reInvent channel, so we're trying to meet up here. So just talking to each other more. Too. And the, you, you mentioned that um, you get job postings on there. I mean, that's really powerful. Yeah. I mean, anybody looking to advance their career, this is what user groups can do for you. It puts you in touch. There's a network inside of this as well, and that's, that's super cool that you've got that on, on Slack as well. I think I have uh, two things. One is I'm very proud of the user group leaders. Mm -hmm. who are actually building this, these communities around Latin America and, and Spain. I'm talking, sorry, I'm talking for, for the ones that I, that I yeah. uh, know, but I'm proud of all of you, of course, <laughs> um, and the ones that we have in the audience. But um, I'm proud of, of these guys in particular because they, they give away personal time to this. Mm -hmm. you know? I mean, no AWS or any other company is paying them to do this. You know? So that is really valuable for me. So that's one thing. And the other thing is, as Margaret mentioned, we have a Slack, uh, Slack uh, channel, and, um, and we have one channel for each AWS service. Mm -hmm. We also have these uh, job postings and, and the reInvent. So most, some of these uh, guys here are from the Latin America uh, community, and, and we're basically gathering together every, every single day. Excellent. Yeah, that's, that's really good. I think, I think we're all very proud of the, the user groups that's come up, and you must have a great sense of uh, pride in the, the ones you've helped bootstrap because that's one of the hardest hurdles to get over, so that's, that's really good. And uh, like you say, it's everybody giving up their own time. So as a user group leader as well, there's also the skilling up there that you get and the, the, the recognition you get from the community locally for that as well. And, and one thing that I don't want to scare everybody is not that you basically eight hours a day doing this. <laughs> you know? I mean, it's very rewarding, as you said, Rick, mm. and, and, and it, it really feels good to help uh, foster your own AWS community. Yeah, excellent. I'm going to put up on the, uh, on the screen now, I'm going to put up our link. So if you're thinking of questions as we go along, drop them into, uh, drop them into Slido. Um, you need this code here, hash G900, and you can put questions up. Um, I'll go through and moderate them and push them up, and then you can upvote them as we go along. So if you've got questions you want to ask the panel, we'll get these, these in at the end. Well, first of all, let's, let's talk about um, this. We, we've got a lot of members here who aren't, uh, a lot of people here who aren't members of user groups. Um, what's the best thing they can get from joining a user group? In one sentence, what can you think of? For, this is a question I answered last year as well, and, and I think the best thing you get when joining a, a community group is networking. Mm -hmm. I can't disagree with that. Definitely networking, just being among people that kind of share your joys and pains of AWS and figuring it out, too. Yeah. Um, I think I'll give specific examples for this case. So I have two stories to share. One is a, so he's a developer, and then he got inspired in the user group to actually take the certification and eventually become a leader. Mm -hmm. So he has advanced his uh, career, he, uh, he decided he, was, he wanted to try a different venue and just participating and yet seeing how the speakers behaved, uh, he, he decided to be active and then became a leader itself. And then the other one, um, so that was Mike. And the other one, Rax, uh, she was a female uh, participant. And what, what really struck, struck me is that in the beginning, she just... She was just at the back, maybe at the, at the far back, you know. And then over time, what she mentioned is eventually with our inspiration and talk, she became like a country, sorry, a country lead for the company itself. Mm -hmm. So she attributed that to actually participating and just networking in the user group. She put herself out and that 
is actually what led to her uh, promotion eventually. So I think the, it's really for those stories, the individual stories, that makes the user group very uh, rewarding itself. Yeah. Yeah, I'd have to agree. The networking aspect is, um, stands out for me at a personal level and seeing the group grow. So I have a similar story. I popped out to buy a phone about six months ago, just chatting to the lad in the store. He mentioned that he had just finished his degree but was doing IT. I got chatting. He basically said, I've done my medical degree, but I've taken a master's in IT. How, how did I get into IT? Come along to the user group. And, and within a week, this lad was, was chatting to people, networking, meeting people who were hiring, people who are in a position to advance them, etc. So yeah, networking, it's got to be networking, totally. Excellent. It's, I, think, I think you touched on this, Rafi. Um, Diversity is a, a real key that, as a community, we're all responsible for. Um, pushing this message out and encouraging everyone to get involved is something that I'm really, really keen in us doing. So this is something we all need to consider as members. We all need to help each other. And we're all here to learn. That's the best thing. Networking. You said networking. Spot on. Um, talking to your peers, helping your peers. Everybody help each other. We're all here for the same, same reasons. So I'm going to drop, uh, drop down now, and I just want a quick chat with us about um, what happens if you don't have user groups near you. Do you know of any resources that um, our, our users can reach out and, and get involved with, other than the Slack channel and things like that? Is there anything you suggest? Yeah, so Slack is an interesting one, and, and I noticed the guys have got their, their individual Slack channels. We, we tend to do it slightly different in Scotland, like most things. <laughs> um, <laughs> We found that there was quite an advent of Slack channels, so we thought, let's all get together. So we have a DevTech Scotland Slack channel, so you can go onto that one Slack channel. We have topics for Oracle, AWS, other cloud providers, etc. cetera. Um, but we have come together in, in one resource, and it's very active, it's very supportive, um, and everybody knows one another, so, so it works really well for us. Um, I think. It, usually there is a group not necessarily specific to AWS itself, but you can always spin a group. You know, I, I say when, so right now we're also expanding our group, opening new regions, not regions, regions, like, <laughs> like the, um, new cities. And what I encourage them to do is just do a coffee meetup. You know, just small group, five people, that really is, is a start, you know. We, although we do know that there's a lot of online uh, information from AWS itself, there's tons of information, but I do encourage everyone, if you don't have a group, just start one, be it, keep it simple, uh, no pressure at all. That's okay. Yeah, so I think similar to your point, there's probably a meetup overwhelm there. In Chicago, it's very siloed by technology, I've noticed, so there's Python and you know Linux groups, and they don't always cross. Um, so just um, <laughs> yeah. getting out there and trying multiple groups. And then I have had some success working with other groups who maybe aren't meeting as much. And like, hey, let's do um, OWASP, the security group, and AWS meet that together. Um, so there are groups out there that maybe just don't know about other groups, or some people are probably in all of those groups. So it's good to combine it. Um, and if you haven't found one, it's really easy to start a group um, and just get help, definitely. Yeah, <laughs> yeah um, I think in, in this question is, if you, if you want to create a user group, just reach out to me, to <laughs> her, and to <laughs> these guys. I mean, it's, uh, it's the, the only way to do it. You know, if you need help, just ask. Yeah. Um, do any of you do uh, video in any of your sessions as well and push that out? I know some of the, the, group, the larger groups in the UK do this. Um, so if you can't make a meetup, uh, push it out. Do any of you do any video assets at all? Yeah, so for the online community we have in, uh, for AWS in Spanish, we do a uh, monthly webinar via YouTube. And mm -hmm. people just connect and, and, you know, we stream these online uh, videos. But also we're putting that as a platform for any user group uh, in the Hispanic community to just stream their own, their own meetups as well. Okay. 
So I'm going to put this, uh, this question from the audience in, uh, into our flow here. Uh, this is from Anonymous. I mean, come on, be brave. Put your name in here. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to ask this one to, to Margaret, actually. Um, so where can you get a list of user groups that have already been created? Good question. So most of them are on meetup.com. I don't love meetup.com for dealing with um, attendees, so I use both Eventbrite and meetup.com, but okay. I've asked my members, and I think finding it on meetup is the best way to find it, and then actually attending, figure that out later. Yeah. Yeah. There, is a, there is an AWS uh, website to, to actually find there as well, yeah. and you can just um, uh, check for regions like uh, Europe, uh, Latin America, uh, uh, Asia. And, and you can get the list of, of meetups per, per country as well. Yeah, there we go. So I can, uh, that was the most asked question on, uh, on Slido, so we can put that, that one to bed there. Meetup.com, and also on the main AWS site, if you search for community, you'll get a list into all the areas within there to actually dig into regions, like you said. So that's, that's kind of really, really handy. OK, so peer-to-peer um, -peer learning, that's what user groups are all about. Um, we're all there to share knowledge with each other. What's the main takeaways your user groups get from peer-to-peer -peer learning? Can I ask this one to Rafi, actually? Um, I, I think what's different about it is what I'm trying to say. What's different than me standing up here and teaching somebody to your users? I think in, in our country, we are fairly, um, you know, as... Uh, uh, we're fairly, uh, there's a lot of developers in our country, and a lot of them really are brilliant in a sense that they can read, they can learn on their own. And so there are other venues to, uh, if you want to go deep dive on a service or learning, there are other venues for that. The main takeaway, as mentioned before, is really the networking here. Mm -hmm. We encourage, and actually we even force our <laughs> attendees to network with each other. <laughs> Because uh, we do see a tendency for our, I would say, our kind, uh, our, to really uh, be isolated, to be shy. And so that's why we encourage everyone to be, a, uh, to be more like a social butterfly, you know, just, just yeah. be present. That's really the first step. Be present so that eventually you get comfortable and then you can re interact with everyone. Excellent. I'm going to put this next one to Craig. Um, so this next question comes from Pipe from the Honolulu user group. I'd personally like an invite to come and speak there because that's Me too. a fantastic uh, destination. So um, how do you decide what topics to present on and how do you feature it and how do you balance the type of topics there between advanced and beginner and stuff? Um, we discuss it simply. Yeah. Um, I think the best bit of advice I was given when I started my user group was, was I think, was Ian your predecessor? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I dealt with Ian Massingham when I started my user group, and he basically said, treat it like development requirements. Treat your user group. Ask them. Speak to them. And, and we do. We discuss a lot of things. Um, there's obviously buzzwords and, and buzz services that everybody's keen to do, and we tend to get AWS long to do that. But things in general, we, we, we discuss it and we put it to a vote, simply as that. It's a community, so everybody has a, an equal voice. Mm -hmm. Although my voice can be a bit louder sometimes. Yeah, so um, I'm going to take more, because uh, we've got quite a lot of questions coming in here. It's really good. Thank you for participating, everybody. So um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to semi-answer this one, and then I'm going to go over to Fernando for this as well. <laughs> hey. Um, so how can we attract um, speakers to user groups? Um, Leanne's put this forward, and she said um, this is a, a, another UK user group, Sheffield. It's only a few months old, and... They've grown to about 100 uh, users, a 40% turnout, and there's only a few people ready to speak. I mean, from my point of answering that question is, reach out to us, uh, particularly in the UK, reach out to me, um, and we'll come and present and help kickstart that. But then how do you get that growing as a community? How do you encourage people to get involved? What we did this year was um, we put a, like a, uh, a draw between everyone who were speaking from March to October, and the winner just got a reinvent ticket. Wow. Yes. yes. Is that from one of your sponsors, or? No. No? We spoke with AWS. Ah, OK. Well, 
kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. yes, I mean, it, it was a really an interesting way of um, encouraging people to just give a talk, you know. And we did it across all Latin America and, and Spain groups. And one guy from, uh, uh, in this case, was from Argentina, just won the, uh, the ticket. Mm -hmm. And following on from this, this is quite a closely related question, so uh, feel free to pass the mic down if, you, if you'd like. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of talk here, another anonymous user. Um, do you have some way to get the newbies in, involved in the group? How do you encourage them to, first of all, network and then actually maybe grow the confidence to come and talk? Is there any particular tips and tricks you can share with us? My core competency, I like to joke, is nagging. <laughs> so I, I badger my members. If there are people that I've seen a few times and they're really talkative after, I'm like, hey, when are you going to give that talk? And so I just persist. <laughs> yeah. So we, we've, got, um, we've got questions here about uh, how do you get the ball rolling for a new user group? Um, it's, it kind of varies region to region. So can you share your, your, your views on how you got the user group running in the first place? Um. For us, for Ali, it was about consistency. Like I said, um, there is a tendency also to uh, just, you know, just be lazy about it. So I think the number one is to be consistent, to be dedicated, get a co-leader, and then be prepared to be the, actually the ones to speak over and over and over again. You know, in the beginning, you'll probably do that yourself. You'll be the speaker. Don't be shy. You don't have to be really the main expert. And you can always say, let me, uh, let me get back to you on that in the next meetup. So you encourage them to join the next meetup, and you'll do your own research so that on the next meetup, you can bring back that uh, information. Yeah. yeah. And Craig, from a, a side of um, working with us, uh, what were the steps you took to help promote and get that new group going. Uh, what did you do there? Um, we, we basically posted on Meetup. We waited till we got to a critical mass and, and then posted our first user group. Mm -hmm. um, again, we worked with you guys. You helped, you, you helped promote at the, the level. Um, but effectively, that's what we did. We, we waited till we got to a certain mass. And it was, it was Ian you was working with it at was the time, Ian. wasn't yep. it? Yep. So did you reach out to him quite early on and then ask um, for promotion help and um, that way? Well, I was quite lucky, actually, because it happened the other way. So, so I went along to an awesome day. Mm -hmm. Ian was presenting, said, we don't have a user group in Glasgow. We quite like one. Can somebody volunteer? I jumped out the next day and said, yeah, I'll kind of do it. And we worked with Ian. So, um, but, but Ian did promote quite heavily. To, to be honest, um, and then once we actually got a critical mass, we put a date in, and then we just built it from there, just ne started networking. Okay, yeah, so definitely also reach out to the evangelist team. We will actively help you promote your group to, to gain those members to get that critical yeah. mass in the first place. We'll, we'll do that. I think it gives a group credibility. Yeah. If, you, if you've got a big name or, or an evangelist or somebody who can come along and g give you that headline topic and do that deep dive hands-on session in the room, um, we certainly notice that we get bigger numbers for, for, for AWS speakers coming along for sure. Yeah. I mean, I can share that from my experience pre-AWS as well. Um, I ran eight different user groups around the country. And when you get an industry aligned expert to come in and talk, an AWS person, it really, really helps boost the numbers. And you tend to get higher turnouts, I find. like. Uh, a meetup is a very strange place to be. Um, if you open 100 places up, in the UK, you can probably expect a 60 to 70% turnout. Um, and that's normally because it's, it's a free event. There's no, nothing to lose if you don't turn up. It's annoying for other members because you can't admit them into the group and let them come in and they can't register um, to, to attend that event. Um, but talk to your groups about that. Um, help help get them to say, sorry, I can't make this one. And it frees the spaces up for other people. But when you get an AWS Align speaker come, it really, really helps boost um, and get that ball rolling in the first place, I would say. Um, and we're, we're very happy to do that. So please reach out to us. Um, I don't know if Ross is still in the room. So Ross looks after our community. And another thing to do is actually reach out to Ross. Um, and he'll get you listed on the official AWS page. Um, he'll help with the promotion. He'll send you a kit to to get the things started. 
And uh, we'll be doing things with uh, getting swag to you soon so you can give them out of your user groups because that always gets, gets people to join. Stickers. Stickers. Stickers is always good. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody loves stickers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've got some uh, user group stickers if anybody wants them at the end as well. Um, so let, let's go and talk about our user groups and how do you think the independence factor of um, AWS user groups helps with that learning? What, do you think it's different? Yeah, let, let's start somewhere in the middle this time. <laughs> um, do you think it actually is a, an advantage that the user groups are so independent of AWS and not, there's no rules and regulations we put on you, <laughs> apart from don't use the logo? Um, does that aid with, with getting the, the learning out to the community? I think so. I think it's, everyone always asks me, oh, do you work for AWS? I'm like, no, I don't. I just run the group. And I think that helps kind of lower the barrier for people to come in. You know, they're not going to hear from an expert, and it's not as intimidating. It's other people I like to focus on. It's user-run, user-led. So it's all about users and experience. And the topics can be not negative, but realistic if, you know, something doesn't work or doesn't have the functionality. Um, this June, the Midwestern user groups got together and did a community day. And one of the talks that I, I really nagged one of my members into giving because he always talked about, you know, he did this project and he really wishes there were three or four things. He found kind of workarounds to make it work, so he shared what he learned, but then he also ended with a wish list for AWS. Like, man, I wish these things worked. So I think that's more constructive to not feel like AWS is looking over your shoulder or checking your slides. It's more open and inviting. Hmm, okay. Um, right, I'm going to uh, get some more questions from here as well. Um, do you, any of your user groups do hands-on labs um, and workshops as well as a meetup where people stand and present? Um, yeah, we, we, we've done a few hands-on labs and a few workshops. So last year I attended the Well Architecture Framework, so took that back to the user group. We, we had that. Went down pretty well. It can be a bit difficult because it takes a bit of time, takes a bit of setup. You need quite a few more people, but, but we have done some labs and we've done some workshops, yeah. Um, it does work, but you, you need to plan it. And it's a different type of space you need as well, isn't it? You yeah. Power and desks yeah. and, and stuff like that. Power, configuration. So, Following on from that, I'm going to go to, uh, to Rafa here, and the questions are moving up and down on my screen at the moment. Um, when you have talks that come in, um, do you prefer um, community uh, members to just do a presentation, or do you encourage them to do demos as well? Um, that, that's a good question. So we don't really restrict our speakers on the format, mm -hmm. right? So. We do encourage them to actually do some demo, but we encourage them, when you do demo, have a video recording of the demo. Because as we all know, when we do live presentations, something always goes wrong. <laughs> so have a backup with your video. Um, and that's also great, you know, when you have a demo, they actually see and they can recreate that demo on their own. The uh, curse of the evangelist, yeah? Um, something always breaks. Um, so, Margaret, can you give us an example of a, a typical agenda and um, even uh, examples of past agendas that you've had that's worked particularly well? Sure. Um, so normally, I, I've noticed in Chicago, people just like to get in there, get pizza, maybe have a drink, and sit down and watch a presentation. So I try to do two or three just because one person going on and on for an hour gets boring, even if you're really into it, it just takes a while. So I try to have two or three, like 20 minute talks, um, maybe turbo talks if people are interested in a longer talk and then some quick turbo talks. Um, in February, I had an event that I'm very personally proud of. Um, I felt like as a woman leading a user group, I wasn't doing enough to promote other women who were working in AWS. So it occurred to me in February and I thought of Leslie Nope in Parks and Recreation, and I had a Galentine's Day event. <laughs> uh, so it was women and non-binary, and I liked it because I created it, but I liked it because it was four, I think we had four or five women presenting topics in AWS, and none of them were being a woman in tech. Yeah. 
I mean, that's one of the questions that's just come through there, is that how do you promote and uh, encourage more people, more women in your group to take part? And um, it's, it's a tough one, isn't it? There's, um, you have to get past all the, the normal social norms. Now, has anybody done anything with um, putting uh, meetups on at certain times? I know we're looking at, in London at the moment, to have a, a breakfast meetup, and it's, it's all down to do with social norms and things that shouldn't really affect the world as it is now, but um, just easier times for um, particularly women to come and take part in user groups. Do, do you do anything like that? Lunchtime meetups or In Chicago, we haven't really. I feel like Chicago is pretty downtown focused. Everyone works downtown and then mm -hmm. if they live in the suburbs, they have to catch that train home pretty quickly at night. So right after work is actually a little more convenient rather than people coming back in. Um, we did do a Saturday hands-on kind of workshop session, and I think that was just as equally attended. Okay, excellent. So, um, go over to Fernanda now. So, um, this is a, a question from Scott about um, strategy for uh, cultivating engagement in your, in your user groups or the ones you've worked with and helped set up. And um, is it a thing that happens organically, or is it something that you have to work very hard at, uh, at getting going? No, I'm a lazy guy, sorry. No. <laughs> to be honest, it's just putting a seed and then it starts growing. I mean, um, I helped one guy, um, Victor from Panama, to build a uh, Venezuela um, user group. And he were, because he's from Venezuela, and, 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 and he started growing the community around him. So he created a Honduras group, a, um, a Panama group, and then another group in, in uh, Venezuela. So it's like, uh, you know, it's just put the seed there and, and it's going to start growing um, automatically, I will say. Yeah. Um, so we've got quite a lot of questions coming in here about how do I find a user group, um, how do I start one. Um, Robert was asking how does he start one in Nebraska, come and find me after, and um, I'll, I'll talk to you and give you some pointers. Also, we've got a, uh, a user group booth in the expo hall. Um, stop by there, have a chat to some of the other user group leaders that are here as well, and um, they'll give you information about local meetups, and they'll show you where to, to find all the information about joining one. So definitely uh, call by those. Um, I've got a few people telling me to tell you that on, uh, <laughs> on this messaging system here. Um, so the most popular question now we've got here is what motivates you? Why do you do this? Why do you give yourself extra work? So um, my dad jokes that I'm a glutton for a challenge. <laughs> but it, it is community-based for me. I have benefited from being a part of a group and being motivated by other people. I've gotten AWS certified and found a new job through it. But I try to keep it really hands-on. Um, just users and user groups. So you so found I, you've skilled up through being the organizer as well as a, as, as a member yes. of the, the group, yeah. Is um, that the same for everyone here? Yes. Um, as I said, I started my user group. I had virtually no AWS experience. Um, I, and I have a working knowledge, shall we say. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I, the peer-to-peer, -peer, what more motivates me is it's it's a good environment to learn and and people are giving up their time they're coming along for their own free will they're they're generally motivated so it's a very good environment to 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 upskill you, you know i i work for a large financial institution in the uk now i wouldn't have the role that i have without having started the user group it's as simple as that yeah. and plus you see other people moving on as well so it's it's all good and have fun as well and uh, Rafi, so the, the people who come and talk at these user groups, do you find it also helps them in a similar way it's helped Craig being a, a leader? Do you find it, it helps them get known in the community and does that help with skilling up and jobs and everything? Yes, definitely. Um, when you start giving talks, you are actually promoting not just yourself, but also uh, you're gaining leadership skills in a sense because people will come up to you, people will ask uh, to be mentored Mm -hmm. in a sense, and so you are not just uh, at that one time a speaker, but eventually you are growing your community and people look up to you. And so when pe people do look up to you, you also have to maintain a sense of, uh, of humility as well, but at the same time, you really have to skill up because 
you want to be uh, challenged and prepared for anything that they throw into you. And if we, we link that in with another question here about um, do you get feedback from the sessions that are happening in your group and do you use that to help your speakers kind of level and skill up as well there? Yeah. Sorry? Uh, do you get feedback from other uh, community members about the sessions that's going on and do you share that with the speakers? Uh, right now, we're quite informal. We just ask uh, if anyone, you know, has any comment. There's in Facebook. We're active in Facebook. So we have no formal uh, feedback mechanism. That's something we want to improve on as well. Okay, excellent. Um, right, let's, let's make this one. This is a bit more of a, a, a fun one here. So Emma's asked, um, what's the most engaging user group activity you've tried and succeeded with? Um, I know what yours is in uh, Scotland. It's normally going down the pub after. Uh, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, so um, um, let's, let's go over to, to Fernando first. Last year, what we did was kind of another kind of contest. And um, we, we put a challenge of uh, 100 certifications in 100 days. Mm -hmm. So people from different user groups were just doing the certifications. And we didn't reach the 100, but um, I think we got like 40. And, um, and what we did is, again, we, we, we did some uh, raffle and we did some AWS credits for people to just get the certification cost uh, back in AWS credits. Again, we reach out to our evangelists and, and they just help us with, with that. Yeah. So it's, it's, I think it's, it's being about clever and try to get the right uh, connections within AWS or sponsors just to, to fund these kind of activities, you know? Yeah. I mean, this is quite a hard one to quantify, but do you find that a lot of your members, after getting some experience and uh, getting some confidence after a few meetups, will tend to go and do their AWS certifications? Is it helpful for that? Yeah, I think so. Um, just to add, add to the previous question, we actually also do a certification appreciation dinner where we um, get people are certified to buffet, right? Wow. So we tell them it's a Christmas party. If you're certified, uh, limited seats. So send your actual certificate. We need to see them. And then you get buffet dinner. That's pretty cool. I like that idea. Yeah, that's really good. And it's, uh, it's a great way to like, encourage people to, to go and do those certificates as well. Um, I know that when I first did my uh, certification, it was after going to a few meetups and actually doing presenting. So um, it really does help boost your confidence and, and take that, I found, personally. So um, you said the same as well, Craig. I know you did the same. It helps you develop as an individual. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're not used to public speaking, it's a friendly environment to do it in. Stand up, try. Um, you know, you'll learn. So, so yeah, it helps you uh, in a professional sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, we've got a question here, um, and I think, Fernando, you're going to be the best one to answer this one, because you've helped a lot of user groups get started. So um, Alex has said here, um, I host uh, meetups, and um, they're just getting going, but they're struggling to grow over 30 attendees per event. How do you get people involved? How do you get over that plateau? How do you drive adoption? <laughs> Yeah, it's a tough one. It is. Um, I think the best way is to, it's a mouth, it's a mouth, it's mouth to mouth kind of a, a mm -hmm. engagement, mouth, word, word mouth, excellent. Yeah. It's, it's great word to have mouth, someone, yeah. someone next to you who speaks English. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, I think it's more than, than is, is, is that, you know, is that you get people to get in their own jobs and say, hey, you know, we have a meetup this next week, so why don't you just come and, and, and let's hear about what we're going to do. Yeah. And, and if yeah. you rotate your speakers, it's even better because, you know, the circle is, is growing and growing. Yeah. I, I think that's really a key. Rotate your speakers, encourage more people to go. And you get a, uh, a bit of a, a flywheel of um, momentum there. So as your user group grows, you've got more speakers. As you get more speakers, more of them skill up and feel happy to talk. And the networking part, I find, is key to that. If everybody feels they're among friends, they'll come and speak. So that's really good. And to be honest, December is the best time to open a user group. 
because you have all the reInvent announcements and you do like a re, what's the name? Reinvent recaps. Recaps. Yes. So you do recaps and then you have a lot of people interested in coming. So you set up the user group, you start on December and then it's going to be very, very easy yeah. to, to keep going. I, I know uh, Glasgow, they do their own uh, recaps and there's a couple of other user groups. Uh, Newcastle are doing their own recap. Um, but then the evangelists will try and hit as many um, user groups that they physically can um, to, to like come and help with that. So that's a, that's a really good tip that uh, that really helps get things going. Um, so I'm going to start winding this up now so uh, we can all uh, just uh, move on to the next sessions in a minute. And uh, there's been some great questions here. A lot of this is about finding user groups. Like I say, call past in the expo hall. Um, and come and talk to us. Come talk to these, these guys here as well after, after the... Uh, after we come off stage, that'd be great. Um, there's, some, uh, there's some amusing questions on here as well. Um, and I'm, I'm gonna take one more. Uh, how do you find different, uh, the difference between uh, technical experts and community leaders? Is it one in the same thing or is it different sets of skills that you need to kind of build up in each team? Yeah, I think they're pretty different. Um, some people are really good at being very technical and they can do a cool demo, but maybe don't convey their excitement as well. So it's good to have those talks and see the technical code on screen, but also hear someone who is really excited about a new service or how things work. Uh, my big personal goal is to always make it not a sales pitch. I really <laughs> emphasize that to everyone who says that they want to speak. And then I give sponsors five minutes at the top of the night to do a pitch or talk about jobs they're hiring anything you want for five minutes, and then the rest of it is all worthwhile content. Absolutely. So let's just have a, a very quick recap here before we all, uh, we all break up. So user groups, great place to go and learn and get information from peers. It's a very honest environment. Um, we've heard that it helps with careers because you've got the network inside and people get offered jobs and uh, learn about things, so that's always great for you. Um, We've spoke about certification and how the building the confidence just by listening to your peers talk about how they do things. It's actually a real confidence boost. Um, I've found before that I've been got validation because I've heard someone else talking about how they do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, oh, I do that. And it made me feel better about what I was doing. And it, it just, just kind of built that confidence there. So that really helps. I'd highly recommend if you're not in a user group to go and join one. Um, have a look on the community side of the AWS site, call in the expo hall, stop one of us. Um, user group leaders will have a badge on later, um, so you'll be able to spot them. Um, a little, there we go. Uh, expertly modeled there by, by the two, two in the middle. No, three. It's just you, Craig. You're letting the side down. Yours is here, yeah. Um, so thank you very much. Thank you for coming along. and. Um, Please leave some uh, feedback about this session, and if you like panel sessions, let us know, and we can, we can do more, we can do different things with it. Let us know if you like the Slido way of putting questions up to the, the page. I'd love to hear your feedback, but thank you very much for being here today. Thank you.